Hello and welcome back. It's still no effort November, so here we go. This chip here is a 6502. Specifically, it's a Western Design Center 65C02. The 6502 processor used to power things like the Commodore 64. The Commodore 64 ran on the 6502. The Commander X16 runs on the 6502. Many other computers ran on the 6502. It was a very popular CPU and it was very powerful for what it was. It could do a lot of work uh, in very little cycles and it was very easy to implement. So it was a great success. This here is called a bad 6502. It's a board that holds a 6502. This blue board sits on top of a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi powers the 6502. The whole thing is called the bad 6502 and for a long time it was my dream computer. Um, I opened up the, pro the uh, project and uh, I shared all the files and it was no success at all. So what did I do? I didn't give up. I kept on working. So the next iteration is this here. This is the new BAT6502. It is a 6502 and it runs on a Raspberry Pi. Now, the whole thing is very simple. The 6502 basically becomes a slave processor to the Raspberry Pi. So the 6502 has no issue with being on a Raspberry Pi. In fact, it doesn't even notice. Everything that it needs to live, like memory, a clock, a bus, hardware, is simulated by the Raspberry Pi. Now, a lot of people say that is emulation. Well, I'm not emulating a 6502. I'm emulating the rest of the computer. And a lot of companies did that because many computers of the time came with huge ULA chips that were basically running the 6502 to make it work with the limited hardware. In this case, it's the other way around. Compared to the 6502, this hardware is unlimited. It has Wi-Fi, it has HDMI, it has USB, and it has quite a lot of memory. And it can make all of that accessible to this little chip on the back here. Now, among the software that was available for the 6502 were several dialects of BASIC. Microsoft made one of them. And about a year ago, they open sourced it, which is something very unusual because giving away is not their thing. Nowadays, they're taking a lot of stuff or they want you to give it. But in this case, this piece of hardware here is the perfect learning platform for running a lot of this 6502 BASIC that was released by Microsoft. There are other projects where the different BASIC flavors for the different computers have been set aside so you can build every release from them. We're going to have a look at a couple of those and let's see if we can make some of them work on this very strange 6502 platform. Let's go. Alright, um, I set up a connection to my BAT6502 board and uh, we are currently logged in and I can do a lot of stuff here. Uh, it's an SSH connection. I have remote editing enabled on that so I can access it with Visual Studio Code. And here we can see uh, the basic that I'm using. This is actually a repo that was created by Michael Steil. And we have several flavors of basic in here and we can build all of the ROMs for that. So we have the Commodore Basic 1, Commodore Basic 2, the, uh, the OC, we have Applesoft Basic, we have Basic for the Kim, we have Applesoft Basic 2, uh, we have the Microbe Tan, we have the uh, KBD1, 
Okay, everything is in there. And I've already gone ahead and built those. Um, most of them were released uh, around 1977, but some came later and had more functionality or were version 2. Now, how do we test something like this on a BAT6502? What we need to do is uh, we need to create um, wrapper files for that. For, for this reason, I have basically um, imported all of the uh, basics that I was able to export and um, turned them into binary files. These are the ROM files themselves. And uh, for reference, we're going to start with um, the Commodore Business Machines basic version 2. Now, everything is uh, intentionally very simple. I have um, a library or an object file that is for the BAT 6502 CPU. Um, I named it after the fake 6502 uh, library uh, because that makes it possible just to take existing projects and just swap my real non-emulated 6502 CPU in there. And um, the code is really simple. Uh, basically, we get 64 kilobytes of RAM. Uh, we need to do some work to get um, direct access to the terminal because uh, we want to use standard in and standard out as the terminal for the basic. And uh, the basic by Microsoft is designed in a way that it actually has its own input handler, which is very, very neat. Apart from that, uh, we need uh, some functions to read our memory. Usually, this will just return the memory address. We have one exception if we read a special address that is uh, FF01, then we want to have um, basically any character available for, from the keyboard. If there is no character available from the keyboard, it will return zero. Uh, this is basically the same way that the um, bias functions for key in from the Commodore used to work. Uh, we have the same for write, uh, but if we write to a special address, which is FFOO, um, what we want to do is we want to um, print the character that was written there. So this is our, our IO. And um, all of that is pretty much straightforward. Uh, the main program is basically just uh, zeroing out the memory, loading a minimal bias, loading, oh, this is the basic code, loading the basic code at the address where it belongs, loading a minimal bias uh, that I'll go into in a second. Um, then we reset the 6502. Um, we start running it and make sure that it steps out of the reset code. And then we just have one very, very simple loop where we step ahead one instruction. And uh, that's it. That's the, that's the whole program. Um, now for the Commodore Business Machines 2, we need a bias that uh, defines the character in, character out, load, save, stop, get input, and clear all um, calls into the bias. And basically, these are just small wrappers to um, output everything that we have um, to address, or is it, to address zero, zero, uh, FF00, zero, zero, and to get keys from FF01. If there's no key, uh, then we jump back. If there is a key, we, uh, we set a flag and, and return. That's it. Uh, so a very, very simple bias. It's just a few bytes. And in fact, I went ahead and I did this for quite a number of basics. So if we look in here, we have 
the Apple Basic, Commodore Business Machines 1, Commodore Business Machines 2, Kim 1, Micro 10, uh, and uh, the OC. And now we can just we can just build the whole project. So we do a make all. Takes a bit of a while because this is just a Raspberry Pi Zero. But once it's done, we have all of our executables, like for example the Commodore Business Machine Basic 2. And if we run this, we actually get CBM Basic 2. Um, and it tells us that we have 31,000 bytes free. And now we can just program. We can go 10 print hello 20 go to 10 and we can run it. And it just works. Uh, it is very simple. Um, and with the control X we can exit the basic inter interpreter. And uh, yeah, that, that's the simplicity. Um, you can do everything really easy. I mean, you can do a whole lot of stuff. You can basically run a Commodore 64 in mostly emulation, but not the uh, CPU. Um, you can run very simple stuff. You can run interactive stuff. Uh, it is super easy and a lot of fun. And that's what I wanted to show you. So. Uh, Thank you very much for watching, and bye-bye. Uh,